uh, is about topology hiding computation for networks with unknown delays. And it's with my many co-authors, Rio, Genta, Wally, Tal, and Tanya. This is about multi-party computation or MPC, where a bunch of parties, some of which may be corrupted, want to run some protocol, which is almost as good as this trusted third party, uh, who just takes the inputs and distributes the outputs to the parties. So what this means is that the protocol should reveal nothing about the inputs except what can be computed from the output of the function. And now what one can ask the question, what about other aspects that the protocol could leak? For example, if you think of broadcast, what about the sender of the message uh, or the receiver maybe? And topology hiding computation looks at one particular such aspect, which is the network topology. So parties communicate via incomplete network and they want to hide the communication graph. And one justification for this could be, for example, social, social network where parties communicate with their friends and, uh, for example, via Facebook, um, and they don't want to reveal to friends of friends of friends of friends who their friends are. So what know about topology hiding computation? We have a bunch of protocols already. Uh, they look at different types of adversaries, different classes of graphs and different setup assumptions. And one disclaimer is that uh, topology hiding computation uh, always look at, looks at setup that is reusable and independent of the graph, not to trivialize the problem. And this is the only setup I will talk about here. So these first four protocols uh, consider passive adversaries. The first two are only efficient for graphs with small diameter. Uh, the third um, works for cycles and trees. And finally, we have a protocol for all graphs. Then we look at more powerful adversaries, for, like, for example, a fail stop adversary who can crash parties. Um, and here we have these two protocols that both work for all graphs. The first one requires uh, a hardware setup, so secure hardware boxes. But one uh, implicit assumption behind all of these protocols is a network assumption. They all require that the network is fully synchronous, meaning that the parties are synchronized and uh, there is a known upper bound on message delivery time. And there is, it's guaranteed that a message which is sent will be delivered before that uh, upper bound. But this is not how the real world works, right? Uh, the world is not synchronous, messages are delayed, parties are desynchronized. And so in this work, we ask what happens to topology hiding computation or THC for short, if, um, if we don't assume a synchronous network. And sadly, our first result is impossibility. And we prove that in, uh, in a model where, as usual for asynchronous MPC, the adversary is allowed to schedule messages, topology hiding computation is impossible. And in fact, we rule out quite a lot of settings because uh, we only assume that, we, we assume that parties are already synchronized, a message between honest parties are delivered synchronously, so there is a known upper bound but the adversary can schedule messages between corrupted parties and their neighbors. And this already rules out uh, THC. So then we propose a model where the topology hiding computation is possible. And here the messages are delivered with uh, arbitrary random delays, but independent of the adversary. Still parties do have synchronized clocks and we thought this was a milder assumption than this upper bound on the network delivery. In particular, it allows uh, protocols that run as fast as the network, the actual network, not the upper bound. Of course, we propose uh, protocols um, for our model, one for cycles and trees, under standard assumptions, and the second one for all graphs, but we assume hardware. So here are our results in the table. We propose this new model with unknown unbounded delays. We consider passive adversaries. And we have one protocol for cycles, and then it can be extended to trees. This is the same setting as here. And one protocol, and here we assume uh, some PKI-like setup. And the second protocol works for all graphs, but we assume hardware just like BBMM here. So in this talk, I want to focus on our model and the protocol for cycles. For the impossibility result and the hardware protocol, uh, please see the paper. I will just say shortly what, what hardware means. It means that every party has 
um, hardware box is own and um, these boxes are preset with shared keys and they perform some secure computation on this shared using this shared key okay so what our model um, we start with the standard model the parties communicate via this network functionality uh, which has a graph inside and delivers messages along the edges and you can think of these channels implemented by this functionality as really secure channels so the adversary doesn't even know whether the channel exists or not, uh, whether the message was sent or not. Only the messages to corrupted parties are, are sent to the adversary. And then in the ideal world, uh, we replace this network functionality by the simulator, who receives the output of the function, and he's supposed to emulate the messages um, sent to corrupted parties. Um, of course, he learns the neighbors of, of corrupted parties. And the graph, if you're wondering, is inputted by the environment directly at the beginning of the computation. So how do we go about defining what, um, what it means to deliver messages with unknown unbounded delays, random? Uh, so first of all, we need a notion of delay and we need a notion of time, and this is what we do. Uh, we add this clock functionality, which synchronizes parties. As I said, parties will be synchronized in our model. Um, this is the more or less standard clock functionality by Katz et al. And it measures um, what we would call atomic clock tick. So think of it as, this, as the smallest measurable amount of time, for example, one nanosecond. And the idea is that protocols will run in rounds and a round will last many clock ticks. So a protocol will do something only every um, R clock ticks, where R is sufficiently large to account for the computation time. So now that we have clocks, uh, we can define means to deliver messages with random delays. And this is done by enhancing the, um, the network functionality graph, uh, the network functionality with delay distributions. So now every edge in the graph has a label, which is a delay distribution. And when the message is sent, uh, the functionality samples um, a delay from this distribution and delivers uh, the message after that many clock ticks. So what this means is that there is no, um, upper bound on the on the delay the delays are completely arbitrary and they are inputted by the environment at the beginning of the execution together with the communication graph but we do not consider um, infinite delays uh, meaning that a message will be delivered eventually uh, so we have we have channels with eventual delivery so that's almost it but as i said a nice feature of asynchronous protocols is that um, protocols run as fast as the actual network and we would like to keep it in our model so what this means is that the protocol running time will actually depend somehow on these delays so we need to leak something to the simulator to to um to simulate the running time of the protocol and this responds roughly to the sum of the delays of in the network um yeah so so we don't leak the actual graph but the sum of the delays. Okay, so this is our model, and now let's go to the protocol for cycles. So first I wanted to tell you why some um, simple solutions to uh, transform any old uh, synchronous protocol into this setting don't work. So imagine we have some sort of protocol, doesn't matter what it does yet, and um, in round i a, a party is supposed to receive the message mi doesn't. So first thing that can happen in our model is that messages arrive late. What does the party do? So first solution, maybe we just abort. So the party will abort, uh, emulate a crash, and the other parties are supposed to run a fail stop protocol. Um, the problem with this is that fail stop uh, protocols, so protocols secure against fail stop adversaries, uh, have security with abort. But in our model, we have actually eventual delivery of messages. So we would like to um, have also eventual delivery of output. Uh, so we, we don't want this uh, weaker guarantee of security with abort, which is inherent in failed protocols. Also, another caveat is that they leak some non-negligible small amount of information about the network. The solution would be to send a dummy message. But this will cause the messages to clog in the network. So we, we now generate a lot of messages. And then we have the worst situation 
think that there are too many messages arriving together. We cannot teach some of them because that destroys correctness. And unfortunately, in topology hiding computation, if we destroy correctness, we usually also leak something about topology, the way we destroy the correctness. Um, we cannot teach all of them because that reveals something about the distribution on the edge. For example, if now this party sends all of his messages, then this party probably learns something about how many messages he got and then something about this edge which leaks the topology. So these are the problems we are facing. And uh, here is our protocol for this simpler setting. So we deal with all of this um, in the hardware protocol using the hardware. And here is our protocol in the standard model for three, uh, four cycles. Um, so we will start with... Uh, with a synchronous protocol and we won't construct MPC directly but we will construct broadcast and as we know we can compile any broadcast protocol into um, into an M into any MPC protocol and we will focus on bit broadcast to keep it even simpler uh, and then of course you can run it many times to broadcast many bits and yeah we start with a synchronous so now we start with the synchronous broadcast on um, bit broadcast on cycles, and the goal is to construct a broadcast a topology broadcast on cycles for our model. We have a bunch of parties on the cycle. We have a sender um, with the bit, and what will the protocol do? Um, consider, for example, this party down here who wants to receive the output. So in the first round, generate an ephemeral keeper, store the secret key to himself, and send an encryption of zero under the public key. And this notation here will denote that he sends both the ciphertext and the public key. So this protocol is, is based on, uh, on Akavia Moran. It's, it's very close to, uh, and Akavia Lavin Moran, the second two, the last two protocols for, um, um, for passive adversaries. Okay, so now in the second round, the next party gets the ciphertext encrypted under beta 1 and does is to generate an ephemeral keeper on his own, store the secret key to himself and send an encryption of, uh, of zero, but under the product key. So now the public keys live in a group um, and one can compute this product public key and uh, transform a ciphertext from encrypted under one public key to encrypted under the product public key. And you can think of El Gamal encryption, which achieves this key homomorphic property. Uh, or you can just think that this uh, bit is now protected by both keys. So in the next round, we got to the center. The center will do the same, but um, in addition, he replaces the ciphertext by the encryption of his bit. So now we have encryption of the bit going to the next party who uh, his key to the product key and finally after four rounds we have five parties we counted four rounds um, we traversed the whole cycle so now for sure the the ciphertext contains the bit um, encrypted under the product public key of all parties but the last one but the last one doesn't need to encrypt and then we start what we call the backward phase where parties delete their keys from the product key so in round one, this message is in, the message is sent back. The party deletes um, his key. Next, deletes next key. After we get to this first party, you can decrypt and get it. So to get topology hiding broadcast, we run this in parallel. Um, all parties run this in parallel to receive their bits in both directions. The sender also acts as the receiver to hide who he is. And uh, one can extend to all graphs using random walks. This will not be the case for our protocol. Um, yeah, so what are the problems with this? Uh, so the first problem with this protocol, if we go to, um, to our setting, is that we don't know when to start the backward phase. So for the f this first um, variant, we will consider network with constant delays for simplicity. Then I will tell you how to deal with variable delays. But for now, let's uh, consider constant delays, uh, unknown, so still we cannot run this, this first protocol. And 
Here, the first problem is that we don't know when to start the backward phase. So before we counted how many rounds, um, the, the, how many rounds, rounds the protocol runs, and after n rounds, uh, with n parties, we knew that uh, every party saw the ciphertext and we could go back. Now we don't have this guarantee. We don't know the upper bound on the full delay in the network, on the, on the delay in the network. So we deal, uh, so we deal with this by not doing the backward phase. We only do the forward phase, but we require setup. Perhaps not surprisingly, the setup is the product public key. So now every party has a secret key and the product public key of all public keys in the network. And one difference here is that these keys are not ephemeral, they will be reusable. So how we modify the first protocol? Well, at the start of the computation, um, the party sends an encryption of zero, but under the product public key. And then every round, so every clock ticks, the next party will send something. So maybe he didn't receive the ciphertext yet, so he will send an encryption of some garbage value, doesn't matter, under the product public key. Uh, and at some point, you will receive the first ciphertext. And since the first party sent the encryption of zero every round, now after receiving the first ciphertext, the, party will, the next party receives um, one ciphertext, ciphertext per round. So we rule out many of these problems of, uh, of random delays. <clears throat> so what does the party do? Um, as usual, he deletes his key from the product key, sends it on, the sender additionally adds his bit, and after every party deletes his key from the product key, we get to the, um, to the original party, and after the sum of all delays in the network, the party gets the encryption of the bit under his key and gets the bit. So here is the next problem with this, and the problem is that the partial public keys sent around actually leak information. So here is the picture again. Uh, and what if the party is corrupted? So remember that this um, notation actually meant that we also send the public key, we make it public. And the party can watch how long the public key sent by this guy is equal to the actual product public key. And this means that this party actually hasn't received the ciphertext yet. And after the public key changes, uh, he knows exactly, after the public key changes, this means that the guy already received the ciphertext, and this reveals exactly the delay on this edge, which is not topology hiding. So to deal with this now, we won't send the public key around, and we have a special encryption scheme with an algorithm that supports um, and changing an encryption of a zero into an encryption of a one without the public key. And in the paper, we uh, define abstract properties of this uh, encryption scheme that we need, but I'll give you directly an implementation based on diffie hellman So the, <coughs> the keys are uh, diffie hellman keys, and the group operation that we will consider is uh, multiplication in the exponent, uh, and we don't compute it, don't worry. Encrypt a bit under a public key, we generate this... Um, Diffie-Hellman key with a random value. So here, the second component of the ciphertext is always the Diffie-Hellman key. And the first component, this is perhaps a change, it's either g to the r or g to the r squared, depending on the bit. Now to decrypt, we of course shave off the, the secret key from the second component, so this is done here, and check whether um, it matches the first component or whether the square of it matches the first component. And otherwise, uh, we output bottom. So we already have some level of robustness in this decryption scheme, in this encryption scheme. To change a bit, to change an encryption of zero into an encryption of one, of course, if your bit is zero, then you don't have to do anything. But to change, is uh, we just uh, square the first um, component. This is quite easy. Uh, we also need re-randomization, which is obvious here and partial decryption where we just shave off this, the secret key from the second component. And this is to delete your part of the key from the product key. So how will we use it in the protocol? When the party receives a ciphertext C and D, he first tries to decrypt. If it decrypts, he outputs bottom. If not, um, uh, sorry, if he decrypts, he outputs the bit. If So this means that 
the, the cycle is traversed and this was his actual, actual traversal, it, it carries his bit. Otherwise, he partially decrypts, so he shaves off his, um, his part from the product key, re-randomizes and sends. And additionally, if the bit is 1, changes encryption of 0 into encryption of 1 um, by um, squaring the first component. And this works. This, is, uh, this works for constant. Now, how to account for variable delays? And here we, we make some assumptions. So the first assumption is that each party can approximate somehow his distribution on, on his edges, not on the network, but the, the edges that he can see, he can approximate somehow. And uh, the messages are sent are uh, that are sent are clock ticks apart, so every round are delayed independently. So not every clock tick. This would not make sense. This assumption, but every round, if a message is sent, uh, messages are sent uh, two rounds apart, one round apart, then then they're independent. And the idea is to simply make the delays constant by repeating message sends over many many rounds. So. Here's how it looks in picture. For example, if uh, consider the first round, we choose this parameter t based on this distribution. Um, this will somehow correspond to the median of this distribution. Um, and at the beginning of the protocol, the, the left party, um, so we just consider one edge. We, we want to make this delay constant. And at the beginning of the execution, the party generates his message for the start of the, uh, of the protocol sends it together with the index one. Uh, in the next round, so after our clock ticks, he will generate the second message and send the second message and the first message again. So he sends two messages. And this is done until t rounds. Um, and in round number t, he sends t messages. So the first one, the second one, the third one, and so on up to the teeth one. Uh, and this means that the first message was sent t times over um, over t rounds, and t is chosen such that with high probability at least one of these messages will arrive after t ones t rounds. So after t rounds, we know um, that some of these messages, maybe more of this uh, of these first messages, arrived at the second party. And then the second party can actually take this message, so he ignores the message one before um, before t rounds, and in round t he will process it and send it on as um, as if received. We can stop sending the message number one, but we, in the next round we send um, the t plus one message, and this means that the delay is is basically constant, but uh, t times longer. And this is our protocol now. Uh, to summarize, we um, proved that the fully synchronous, uh, fully asynchronous topology hiding computation is impossible. Uh, we propose a model where it is possible, and the model is still much closer to the real world than the fully synchronous setting. So we have uh, random, unknown, unbounded delays. We have one protocol for cycles, and this can be extended to trees. This is what I showed you. And we have a protocol for all graphs that assumes secure hardware. Um, and open problems, there are actually a lot of open problems in topology hiding computation. Um, one immediate problem would be to, um, uh, to have a topology hiding computation with unknown delays for all graphs but without hardware. So this is the same situation as for uh, the fail stop adversary where we had this first protocol with hardware and then the second uh, paper removed this assumption. Um, we could do the same perhaps for topology hiding computation here uh, with unknown delays. Uh, we could consider stronger adversaries, for example, fail stop. I think uh, an active adversary is still a, a widely open problem for topology hiding computation. Um, and then maybe the, the last question would be to remove uh, the assumption of synchronized clocks from our model and propose protocols that are also secure without synchronization. Um, there is also kind of, it's also a bit hard to define because the adversary doesn't know the communication network, so who schedules messages between honest parties. Uh, this is a bit tricky, so uh, I encourage you to, to think about this too. So thank you and uh,